for our first guest this morning, we have Mega World's Kevin Tan, Chief Strategy Officer. He actually saw a boom in Iloilo long before others did. And now Mega World is reaping the benefits. Kevin, finally, we have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Michelle, for having me. Okay, so Kevin, your research, what, what does it tell you about the direction of the property market? I know that leasing, for example, is now 30% of your business. What does it tell you about rents? What does it tell you about sales for your property developments? Well, I think our outlook is generally uh, optimistic and the property sector has remained pretty resilient even through the pandemic. No? Uh, when you look at, uh, for example, Metro Manila, uh, despite the softening and demand, uh, and that I think is very temporary. Uh, we do see uh, prices uh, remain stable, no? especially for example, for condominiums and in the segment where Megaworld operates, we've seen the prices actually hold their ground, which is a good thing considering all things being considered. Uh, for land prices, exclusive subdivisions, ours included, we've also seen in fact prices go up. Hmm. Um, now, what, one of the things, uh, what the things that excites us right now though, is really the growth that we are seeing outside Metro Manila, especially in places where Megaworld operates in, uh, and that's why we're able to see these things firsthand. Places like uh, Pampanga, uh, Cavite, uh, Bacolod, and Iloilo. Uh, mm -hmm. We're seeing you know, robust take-ups there for our horizontal and vertical developments. You know, we've had several project launches uh, last year in the height of the pandemic uh, in those areas. And uh, some of them are either 100% sold out or at the very least around 60, 70% sold out today. So, wow. and, uh, and the demand continues to grow there. And prices also continue to appreciate in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, for the office uh, segment, uh, last year we did a total of 270,000 square meters of lease transactions. Half of that were new transactions, including expansions, and half of that uh, were renewals. Uh, this year, we're looking to surpass that. We're looking to um, do at least 300,000 square meters of lease transactions. So our, our, our general sentiment is, is very much very optimistic, and mm -hmm. we're actually quite excited about all the new investments that's happening actually outside Metro Manila. Kevin, I want to talk about Iloilo. Now the brightest spot in your office leasing portfolio, you're mm -hmm. seeing that boom. Did it come as a surprise? I know that Megaworld started investing there as early as 2013. What did you see? Well, you know, uh, what impressed us about Iloilo was in fact the way the city was uh, um, uh, developed, you know, the infrastructure uh, that was put into that city. You know, they have very good, nice airports, um, very, very nice roads, um, mm. sufficient and stable power supply. I mean, those are the things that really attract um, a lot of our investors. Uh, another thing that was that stri strike us was the number of graduates that was produced by the local universities in uh, Iloilo. Mm. Uh, Iloilo produces anywhere from 25 to 30,000 graduates uh, every year. And that is a source for talent for the uh, growing BPO sector. That's why we are, um, you know, we are doing very well in Iloilo. Um, we have currently 100,000 square meters of office space there, uh, comprising of 70% of the total office market there. All of that is 100% leased out. And currently we're building another 40,000 square meters, which we will be uh, delivering in phases starting uh, next year. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Uh -huh. So, so I guess, Kevin, as Chief Strategy Officer, where is the next boom likely going to be? What, what's the next Ilo Ilo that you see, uh, perhaps in Visayas or in Mindanao? Well, right now, as I mentioned, we 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 we, we discussed four sector, four mm -hmm. areas. Um, we're look, we're seeing a lot of demand coming from uh, Pampanga. Oh, uh, okay. we're also seeing a lot of demand coming from Cavite as well and uh, Bacolod. So these are basically the four areas where we will be really focusing our attention on maybe the, this year and next year. Um, yeah, so we're very, very bullish actually with, with these areas. And, and have you factored in the macroeconomic outlook, for example? We're getting first quarter GDP numbers in less than an hour. How are people in the C-suite viewing where the economy is right now and the kind of recovery you expect? I think a lot will really depend overall on 
how quickly we can vaccinate our population, most especially um, Metro Manila. I think it's ultimate, it's very critical that we achieve a herd immunity here in Metro Manila because Metro Manila or the NCR region still is the center of our economy. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot is dependent on that. I, I think that when uh, when the vaccination does kick in, um, the consumer confidence can be restored. You will see probably a lot of um, you know pent up demand or what they call revenge spending. So I think uh, a lot of go there's going to be a lot of uh, growth in retail, shopping, uh, restaurants, uh, entertainment. I think also there's going to be a lot of domestic travel happening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, last quarter, last year, last quarter, we did see uh, some of our um, uh, uh, outside Metro Manila locations, uh, the our tourist destinations, actually experiencing um, good huh. occupancy, and so we've got a taste of that, and we think that that can very much happen again uh, in a very sustained manner as well. I don't think uh, foreign uh, international travel will will kick in anytime soon. I think that's going to take a while. But I think we have a very robust domestic uh, tourism mm -hmm. industry. Uh, Kevin, given all of these assumptions, then when are you expecting to see a turnaround in profit growth? Uh, you know, um, most property players continue to mm -hmm. see drop in earnings up until first quarter. That's not news. That's expected. That's for everybody. But when do you expect a turnaround to profit growth? Realistically, is it this year? Is it happening by the fourth quarter? Or, or are you waiting for next year? I think this year we can overall, I think starting the second half, we can expect uh, some growth. I think single digits for overall for Mega World. Um, uh -huh. um, I, I think our focus right now is we want to be resilient and we want to be profitable no? um, uh -huh. and to achieve certain growth this year and next year. I don't think we will be anywhere near our 2019 numbers. That was a banner year for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I think it will take a while for us to be able to get back to that level. But at the very least, I think this year we can expect maybe single-digit growth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know, Kevin, that you've set aside a more targeted CapEx this year. It's, it's bigger compared to last year, but it's very targeted. It's 36 billion pesos. 76% will go to development projects, 24% for investment properties, and zero allocation for land banking. Why zero? I mean, is no one selling at this point? Are there yeah. no good prices? Yeah, well, yeah, uh, we, we, we approach our CapEx, of course, with a little bit of caution still, no? Uh, and, mm -hmm. of course, uh, we, we do have uh, priorities right now, which is <clears throat> to complete a lot of our development projects and our recurring income uh, projects as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we're also quite comfortable with our current land bank. We have about 4,500 hectares of undeveloped uh, land right now, so we're quite comfortable with that. Uh, but I think it's not to say that we're not, Going, we can't we can't change strategy midway through. Um, mm. We remain uh, open to opportunities if they come our way, and we can actually revise the uh, the capex and the allocations uh, further on this year. And for those Kevin who are not too familiar, what exactly do you mean by investment properties? Uh, I mean, when I say investment property, I meant our recurring income properties. Ah, uh, okay, uh, recurring smalls, yeah. Okay. And finally, REITs. Uh, how soon? I know you. the REITs has been postponed from the second half of last year. Is it finally happening this year, Kevin? Yes, uh, we're, looking to, um, we're looking to launch our REIT by the second half. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't say much. Uh, you'll have to wait for the <laughs> announcement, but I can tell you it's going to be big. Wow. Okay. On that note, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us and good luck in your projects. Thank you, Michelle. Have a good day.